Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at model monitoring and data drift. The two terms, model monitoring and data drift, are interconnected with each other because if the model was trained on some past data and that data has now drifted, that is the distribution of the data has changed, then the model will no longer be relevant. It won't produce unbiased results. So what we need to do is detect such data drifts and keep our model up to date. How to do that and more details on it, let's uh, look into it. So model monitoring and data drift. Machine learning creates a static model from historical data, but once deployed in production, ML model becomes unreliable and obsolete and degrade with time. So what are what could the reasons for it? The reasons is the data distribution in production changes and causes bias predictions. And other reason could be the user behavior itself might have changed compared to the baseline data the model was trained on. So two things, one either the independent variables or features may drift or the target itself may drift, like the user behavior itself may drift. Both the reasons above are type of data drift. The first one is covariate drift and the second one is concept drift. We will look into that in more details. So model monitoring is the process of continuously flagging such drifts and automating jobs for retraining the model with new data to ensure the model remains relevant in production and gives fair and unbiased predictions over time. So what are the types of data drift? The first type of drift is concept drift. The statistical properties of the target variable which the model is trying to predict changes over time. This causes problems because the predictions become less accurate and unreliable. Some examples could be where the target variable, what the model was actually trained on has drifted or could be COVID-19 brought abrupt changes in customer behavior and impacted the accuracy of forecasting models. Because uh, if you see, because of COVID-19, the offline purchases reduced, online purchases increase, and type of purchases changed because people were staying more time at home. So there is an abrupt change in the consumer behavior. Similarly, with the introduction of UPI, Uni Unified Payment Interface, it abrupted customers' spending method, brought many of the customers to online, but where what they were spending in an offline mode. So one of the main reasons for concept drift to occur is that non-stationarity of the data. So uh, non-stationarity of the data means the statistical properties of the data, it is a target variable, changes with time. This is the concept drift, where the target variable uh, drifts. The second type of drift is covariate drift. The covariate shift is the change in the distribution of one or more independent variable or input variables of the data set. The means of the distribution of the feature itself changes and when the statistical property of the input that is going to the model itself has changed, the same model that was built before will not provide unbiased results and lead to inaccurate predictions. And some examples could be, suppose a model uses income variable, income as an input in, uh, in the model is in production, over time if the income of the population increases by 5 to 10 percent, the model encounters real time data drift. With increased income, the model sees an increase in the mean and variance, hence, uh, therefore, it leads to a data drift and inaccurate predictions by the model. And similarly, if there is a drift in the marital status of population, if many people get married or many people get divorced or many childbirths happen, so that population uh, marital status changes and that could drift the data and uh, can result in models uh, yeah, performance degrading. So what could, are the methods to detect data drift? One thing to note is that all the methods that we will look at which detects data drifts are a lagging indicator of drift. That is only after the drift has happened and the model or the method has processed enough data then any kind of drift has uh, can be detected. So it's not proactive, it's more reactive that after the uh, drift has happened this kind of methods can identify the drift. The first method is Kolmanogorov Smirnov test which is also known as KS test. A KS test is a non-parametric test that compares the cumulative distributions of the two data sets or two samples that is the training data and present data, training and post training data. How much has the data differed with time? And the null hypothesis is that the two distributions are identical and the alternate is that they are not identical. If the null is rejected, we can conclude that there is a drift and uh, maybe a model retraining is needed. The test is only valid for numerical columns because it needs to have that cumulative distribution. 
In case of uh, categorical variables, there is the test is chi squared. The chi squared two sample test is applied to categorical features to identify letter type. So both of these K tests, KS test and chi squared test, are statistical test, and uh, one is used for numerical columns, another is used for categorical features. We will look both of them. We will look into at the end in the practical session that will be followed after the theory. Next method to detect letter type is population instability index, also known as PSI. So before going into details of that, let me make a call out that PSI uh, is not a statistical test, but it's a widely accepted threshold across industries. PSI was originally developed in banking and finance industries for testing the changes in the distribution of risk score over time. It can be used for detecting both numerical and categorical variables data drift. One question can arise is how can it be used for categorical variables, right? The idea is that whenever you have categories, let's say high risk, medium risk, low risk, you can get the pro uh, proportion of data or probability of data belonging to uh, each bucket, and then you can run this kind of numerical uh, methods for detecting the data drift. The idea of PSI population instability index is uh, inspired from KL divergence, Kullback, Libler divergence. We know that KL divergence is a good measure to find how much a observed distribution differs from an ideal reference. And this is the formula where Ri is the reference distribution and Oi is the uh, observed distribution. One problem with KL divergence is that it's not symmetric. If we permute O and R, that is observed distribution becomes ideal and ideal becomes uh, the observed, we won't necessarily find the same value. To address this problem, which is KL divergence is not symmetrical, one can use symmetrical version of KL divergence, it is also called Jeffrey's divergence and Jeffrey's divergence or symmetric versions of KL, di KL divergence is nothing but probability stability index. It is defined as the sum of KL divergence from O2R and R2O, which is observed to reference and reference to observed and this is the formula. Uh, in the practical session, we will check for population stability index as well. And as I said, it's not a statistical test, but widely accepted threshold. And these are the threshold. When PSI is less than equal to 0.1, this means that there is no change in or shift in the distribution of data sets. If PSI is between 0.1 and 0.2, it indicates there is a slight change in the uh, uh, distributions. And when PSI is greater than 0.2, it, it indicates there is a large shift in the distribution. The next method is model based approach. It's a very interesting approach. A machine learning model based approach can also be used to detect data drift between the two population. The idea is to label the data which was used to train the model with target as 0 or labeled as 0 and the real time data at labeled as 1. If the model gives high accuracy, it means it is able to discriminate between the two sets of data. Thus, we can conclude that covariate shift has occurred and model will need to be recalibrated. That is, it is able to detect the covariate shift. On the other hand, if the model accuracy is around 0.5, which means that the prediction is a random guess, this means that significant data drift has not occurred and we can continue to use the model. The disadvantage of modeling based approach is that every time new data appears, we need to retrain and retest. So it's more computationally expensive. Another method is adaptive windowing, which is ADWIN. The adaptive windowing algorithm uses a sliding window approach to detect concept drift. Uh, the method is applicable for univariate data, so you can use it for the target variable, hence you can do the concept drift. Window size is fixed and Edwin slides the fixed size window for detecting any change in the new real life data. A user defined uh, threshold is set to trigger a warning that drift has occurred. So if the absolute difference between the two means that is coming from two sub-windows sub exceeds the predefined threshold, then alarm is generated. So basically it means if the difference between the mean of the two sub-windows uh, is more than the predefined threshold then that means a drift has occurred and alarm will be generated. Another method is page Hinkley method. The drift detection methods calculate the mean of observed value and keeps updating the mean as the new data arrives. A drift is detected if the observed mean at some instance is greater than the threshold value lambda. So as soon as new data comes we will recalculate the uh, mean, use that new data as well to calculate the mean and as soon as there is a uh, the change in the mean is more than a threshold then uh, that, that we already fix as lambda then a drift is detected. So uh, looking at all these methods, some for numerical data, some for categorical data and some methods which can transform categorical features into numerical buckets and then use the method to detect data drift. Uh, are there and uh, we can detect both time kinds of drift which is concept drift and covariate drift and do the uh, 
data drift detection in a better way. But what is the best way to handle data drift in production? So there are multiple ways in which we can respond to data drift. One is blindly updating the model. This is the naive approach. There is no proactive drift detection models. We can recycle at a uh, time interval such that they periodically retrain and update with recent data. Without drift detection in place, we want we will never know what should be the time interval difference in which the model needs to be retrained or when the data drift has occurred, when should it be retrained. Just we are blindly uh, updating or retraining the model whenever the new data arrives. The second method is training with weighted data. It's similar to blindly update the model, but here instead of discarding the old training data, we are giving it less weightage. So the weight is inversely proportional to the age of data. So when the model is trained, we are uh, giving each instance the weight inversely proportional to its age so that the recent data gets more weightage and old data gets less weightage. So, so yeah, these are the two methods. In which first one, we are blindly updating the model every time new data comes. In second one, also we are updating the model, but weighting the new instances uh, more than the old instances. And third one is the best approach, which is incremental learning. So the idea is that when new data arrives, we won't discard the old model, but we will retrain and update it. So basically, the weights that were learned by the old model, we will just in do an incremental learning. As the result, the model is always adapting to the changes in data distribution and also using the old uh, training uh, weights. The approach will only work if the machine learning model allows incremental learning. For example, neural networks, they allow incremental learning, but some other models may not allow it. So in incremental learning, it will take less time to train as well because model is already trained uh, from the past data. As the new data is, has come, we are just doing an incrementing uh, learning where we are training the model for a few more epochs. So uh, the conclusion is that model monitoring and data drift detection are important part of ML model life cycle and needs to be optimized for successful and efficient deployments in production and identifying any kind of detection in real time. We need a proper strategy to handle such drifts and it is very crucial for ML models to give better results with time. So, so we have looked at the complete theory and different methods to detect data drifts. Now let's do a quickly do a practical exercise. So, I will uh, share the link of this Kaggle notebook in the description section and uh, in this, in this uh, notebook what I have used, what I have done is I have used a data set which is customer personality analysis. Basically this data set is freely available, I have added the link also. So what this data set has is, it has different attributes of the customer like year of birth, education, magic, medical status, income. And also it has other attributes like number of store purchases and uh, different type of uh, spending like you know, what amount is spent on meat products, fish products, sweet products, gold products and so on. So basically customer attributes like income, age, marital status and as well as their spending pattern. So what I did was I created two samples, two populations from the data by uh, sampling 50% uh, of the data in random fashion. Next, what I did was I for the numerical columns which are income, recency, amount is spent in wines, amount is spent in fruits, meat products, and so on. We did a Kolmanov of Smirnov test, that is KS test for de detecting if, whether the two samples are identical or not. And uh, so the p value is set to 0 0.05, and the model uh, runs. You can see that every time the p value is very high, it's not less than 0 0.05, hence. Uh, we rejected zero columns. Now what I did was I created one more sample data to future with where I increased the income of the people randomly by 10 to 20 percent. So in one of the uh, more sample the income of the people is randomly increased by 10 to 20 percent. And again uh, what we will do is we will run the Kolmanogor of of test and we can see that we rejected one column which is the income column. Uh, column income rejected and the p value is very small it's it's, it's less than 0 0.05 and the uh, income column got rejected similarly i also use population stability index uh, these are the thresholds widely accepted for population stability index and then i then uh, for the same set of numerical features you can see that for the first two samples uh, there is no significant data de de detected because every time the threshold is within the first bucket which is 0. Point, uh, less than 0. 0.1. So next what we will do is we will 
do a chi square test for homogeneity and we will do it for the categorical features we have two categorical features which are education and marital status and for education these are the categories and for marital status we we do divorce single married together are the uh, uh, are the categories and when we run the chi square test we see that there is no drift in the two samples the first two samples there is no drift because they were randomly selected and they are representing the same population and uh, they are the distribution is same but in the another sample that i created i assumed that the marital status has changed and the married population has increased in future and uh, that i did by randomly crossing it uh, uh, tossing a coin if the probability is greater than 0.15 then it will return the previous status and if it's less than 0.15 the uh, it will return the status as married so so basically uh, i am assuming that the population marital status increased by 15% and when we run the chi square test again on this uh, changed sample we can see that uh, the marital status got rejected education was not rejected education distribution is same but the marital status distribution has changed so chi square test uh, is useful for categorical features Uh, drift detection and ks test psi this kind of uh, methods are useful in detecting the numerical variable uh, that are drift shifts and one more thing that you can see is if we take these two uh, categorical features assuming that both of them has them three categories in the first one the uh, number of samples are 1 1 1 in the uh, second sample is 1000 1000 1000 so still the drift detection it's saying that there is no drift has occurred so basically what i'm trying to show here just one important point of chi square test it works even when the two samples differs in sizes because what it checks only the proportion of uh, uh, the proportion or probability of a sub category within a categorical features so 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 even if the proportion of each uh, sub category within a categorical feature is similar then it will be able to uh, detect whether the drift has occurred or not so uh, that's the practical session with that we can conclude this video we looked at what data drift is what are the reasons why it can happen what are the different type of data drifts that is concept drift and uh, covariant drift we also looked at some of the methods that can be used to detect this uh, kind of drifts both for numerical and categorical features and we also looked at uh, how we can continuously monitor the model model and what are the best ways in which we can do a model monitoring in production and uh, we it was also followed by a practical session hope you enjoyed and like the content please like and subscribe and I'll stay tuned for more such updates bye